Hey YouTube, I'm SSD and it's my honor and pleasure to share with you my autonomous lawnmower project that I built during the summer of 2020. Welcome to my channel, SSDWare. Don't try this at home, but follow along as I take you through the process of how and why I built my own autonomous self-driving zero-turn lawnmower. Like many of you, I spent the pandemic hanging out at my parents' house. My dad was always outside mowing the lawn, so as a hardware and software engineer with an interest in robotic systems, I always wanted to see if I could simplify at least a large part of my dad's work so he could relax more. Mowing the lawn involves long periods of very boring patterns. Sure, it can be fun in its own right, but can this be done by a robot? I mentioned the idea to my mom, and she said go for it, so I set about figuring out how to do this. Fortunately, in college, I worked on a semi-autonomous self-driving RC car, and I've been interested in robotics and autonomous vehicles ever since I was a wee lad. I followed events like the ION Autonomous Robotic Lawnmower Competition in 2004, and the DARPA Grand Challenge, which also began in 2004. Now, these events that involved autonomous lawnmowers and vehicles were almost 20 years ago. So that brings us up to 2020. The tech has evolved over almost two decades. So I asked myself, can I make an autonomous lawn mowing robot at home at my parents' house? I have the lawnmower that my dad uses, so let's see if I can turn that into an autonomous robot. Okay, so with the goal of an autonomous lawnmower in mind, let's pin down some requirements for Mozilla version 1.0. The first thing we want to do is mow, let's say, a large rectangle on the lawn. We don't need to get into details for actually version one of like obstacle avoidance and this and that. Another requirement, a safety system. So don't try this at home. A self-driving mower is a bit of a dangerous machine. And so we should be able to immediately shut off the mower remotely via a safety stop switch. And if our connection to the mower is lost, if our wireless connection to the mower is lost, the mower should automatically shut down. So we need to have that safety system in place. The next requirement is it should be a retrofit. So we should be able to have a human driven mower retrofit it in about 15 minutes and then it's autonomously driven and then be able to, again, in about 15 minutes, take away the autonomy and then make it human operated again. Mostly because it's my dad's lawnmower and he still wants to mow the lawn uh, under his own power. Another requirement is that this whole project should be relatively inexpensive. We can use the bits and bobs that we have lying around at home, and we'll probably need to get some more tech involved, but we don't want to break the bank. And finally, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to attempt to use existing technology and open source hardware and software wherever we can to get this project to reality as fast as possible. So our approach to tackling this problem and building the system is the following. First, we're going to understand how the mower is controlled by a human operator. So let's learn how those systems work. Then we're going to replace the human controls with an RC system, kind of like Doc Brown in the movie Back to the Future. I'm sure you all remember that. And then the next step we're going to take is connect an autonomous controller to that RC system. And finally, we will mow the lawn. Of course, we'll do it safely and we'll always be watching the mower and having a finger on the safety stop button. So with this strategy set, let's dive in. So first we need to understand how a zero turn mower works. There are two control arms. So an operator sits on the mower and there are two control arms, one in each hand of the operator. As you push both of the arms forward, you move forward in a straight line. If you pull both arms backward, you move backward in a straight line. If you move, say, your left arm ahead of your right arm, you begin to turn to the right. And if you move your right arm ahead of your left arm, you begin to turn to the left. So that's how a zero turn mower works. The cool thing is if you put your, let's say your right arm 100% forward and your left arm 100% backward, you will actually spin in place and you'll be doing a counterclockwise turn uh, in place. And that's why it's called a zero turn mower because you're turn radius of your turn is actually zero. You're just like turning in place. So that's why these mowers are pretty exciting. We could do a separate YouTube video about how the drive system on these mowers work, but you can look up those videos. Um, but anyway, that's how this mower works. So now that we know how the mower is controlled, let's replace the manual inputs with mechanical actuators. 
So I found an actuator online and I wired it up to an Arduino Mega uh, with the motor controller. And this actuator has a resistor that has a particular resistance for every position of the actuator. So I wrote a basic PID controller. That's some code that I wrote that runs on the Arduino. And given some input, it moves the actuator to that precise position. Here's a video of me testing out the actuator once I got it working. I'm actually giving the controller an input. So I'm changing a potentiometer and that potentiometer value is then being translated into a specific position that the actuator arm moves to. So once I got this actuator working, I duplicated it and the Arduino Mega actually had another channel so I could have a separate actuator uh, running on that other channel. And so now we have two actuators working. We could then connect an RC system to it. This radio control that we're looking at here has a range of several miles and the mower is only going to be within a few like 100 feet at most of the control, the radio control. So I think we are pretty safe in terms of how the system works. And I got my dad's help to mount all of this equipment to the mower. So we put one actuator on each control arm. Here are some videos of my dad controlling the mower using just the RC control. So we are driving the mower, just like Doc Brown, using a remote control. And it's actually pretty fun. And you can actually be sitting on the mower while you are using the radio control. And you can also be sitting far away from the mower and driving it with remote control. At this point, we've established digital control for driving the mower. The next step is adding an autonomous control system. Without too much debate, I decided to stand on the shoulders of giants and go with ArduPilot, the premier open source autopilot created by DIYDrones.com. Most people use the ArduPilot software for aerial drones, and some of my favorite YouTubers like RC Test Flight often use ArduPilot in their builds. We'll be using it in rover mode, where the mower is an autonomous rover. The software is completely open source, and I purchased the controller and systems from DIYDrones.com. There are a few components to the system. The first part is the ArduPilot Mission Planner software running on a laptop with a special wireless link to the mower's ArduPilot controller. The second part of the system is the ArduPilot controller on the mower, which interfaces with the RC system and has a GPS unit that determines the mower's position quite precisely. This resolution is high enough for our lawn mowing needs. The ArduPilot controller contains all the code that drives the mower and needs to be tuned to know how much it should push forward on the controls to reach whatever speed we've programmed into the mission. Missions in the ArduPilot software work with waypoints, so I auto-generated missions that have paths mimicking those you typically run while lawn mowing. And then I uploaded these missions to the ArduPilot controller and then turned on autopilot. Here are some glorious videos of the mower working autonomously. Now we are always watching the mower and our fingers are on the safety stop switch. If we lose a connection to the mower, the mower will immediately stop. So we are taking all precautions. We're certainly not just letting it run by itself and, and turning away. We are staying on top of it. So how did we do against the original objectives of version 1.0 of the Mozilla project? Well, check, we do mow a large area. We can put in a large rectangle into Mission Planner and mow that area. We have a safety stop switch so we can shut off the mower if anything weird happens. And yes, it is a retrofit. Here's a quick video of us retrofitting the mower, converting it from human control to autonomous control. And it is relatively inexpensive. What the mower doesn't do. The mower doesn't have any obstacle avoidance in version 1.0. We can add that in V2. And it doesn't make its own routes. It receives the pre-planned routes from the ArduPilot software. Please comment below, was this a crazy idea? Should I have done this? Should I not have done this? Should I do another version that adds obstacle avoidance, some computer vision, maybe some sensors, be they ultrasonic or LiDAR? So again, please like, comment, and subscribe. This is my first YouTube video talking about technical topics, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.